My name is Kay Lindahl, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this session on spiritual listening. I'm the founder of the Listening Center, author of the award-winning book, The Sacred Art of Listening, as well as Practicing the Sacred Art of Listening, and a children's book, How Does God Listen? I am also co-editor of Women, Spirituality, and Transformative Leadership, Where Grace Meets Power. For over 24 years, the premise of my work has been that listening is a sacred art and a spiritual practice, even though historically the terms sacred and spiritual have most frequently been ascribed to religion, doctrine, or dogma. In current times, we notice an expanded view which includes the identification I'm spiritual, but not religious. It seems that there is something going on with how we view spirituality. In this session, we are going to explore the relationship of spirituality to listening, how it fits into our understanding of communication, and why it is an important factor for transforming our relationships. Later on in this presentation, there will be a guided meditation on spiritual listening practices. You might want to find a piece of paper and a pen or pencil now, as I will be inviting you to write down your responses then. I'll begin, though, with a brief overview of the sacred aspect of listening. Listening is more than hearing words and more than an action. It is an art. To have a sense of what I mean by this, I invite you to think about a time when someone was truly listening to you, not figuring out what to say next, wishing you would hurry up, or mentally reviewing a to-do list. They were simply there, listening. What was that like? How did it make you feel? Take a moment now to reflect. You might even want to jot down a word or two. Some of the common responses I often hear are valued, cared for, healed, loved, understood, whole, connected. There's a sense of oneness of being at one with each other. Irish poet Don John, John O'Donohue refers to these kinds of conversations this way. When was the last time you had a great conversation in which you heard yourself saying things you'd never said before and received things you hadn't thought of that made your heart sing and that you remember days and months afterwards? When we think of listening as an art, it changes our perception of what it means to listen. Rather than thinking of listening as an act, something we do, we recognize it as an art, something we be, a part of who we are, a way of being. We become a listening presence. Now it takes practice to learn how to listen this way. So I will briefly introduce you to three of them. Silence, reflection, and presence. Short daily practices create muscle memories, which you then embody when you listen to others. First, cultivating silence. There is no listening without silence. Once we expand our capacity for stillness, we can focus on the other with our whole being, not thinking about what we are going to say next or a myriad of other thoughts. There's no need to fix or give advice or respond even. Just be there. It's a practice. Find something that works for you. Meditation, contemplative prayer, maybe labyrinth walking or just slow walking, chanting. Even a minute or two helps reset your brain. Practice daily. The second is slowing down to reflect. Reflection is a practice of getting to know your own voice, connecting to the source within you. Once you know and trust this voice, you can discern when it's time to speak and when it's time to listen. Practice asking yourself what wants to be said next or what wants to be done next, rather than what do I want to say next? Or what do I want to do next? And then wait, wait for your inner wisdom to emerge. 
Then when we begin to speak, it's from a deeper place within our hearts instead of the first thing that pops into our heads. Finally, becoming present. Listening to another with rapt attention may be the greatest gift we can give to each other. Deep listening occurs at the heart level, being fully present with another. We connect, open our hearts. It is in these moments that we are at one with each other and we become aware of something beyond our individual selves, something spiritual, holy, or sacred. Martin Buber says it this way, when two people relate to each other authentically and humanly, God is the electricity that surges between them. When we understand the sacred aspect of listening, we become aware that it is a key to communication in our global community. The quality of our listening can make a profound difference in any conversation. With this context of listening as a sacred art, we can begin our exploration of listening as a spiritual practice. What is the spirituality of listening? It is the art of becoming a listening presence, a way of being in which stillness and attentiveness provide the space for people to speak and know that they are being heard. It is from this place that we can listen across our differences. When we acknowledge the life force and that by, of another by the way we listen, we open up space for understanding rather than for judging. Spiritual listening is at the heart of all relationships. It's the antidote to that missing piece, that longing for connection, belonging, communion, which seems to be so common in our culture today. This type of listening creates a sense of community. When we are open, curious, and attentive to others in this way, we discover a deeper sacred connection. We are in relationship. Noted Quaker, Douglas Steer puts it this way, to listen another soul into a condition of disclosure and discovery may be almost the greatest service that any human being ever performs for another. Each of us will have our own way of defining spiritual experiences. Most will describe them as these moments when we get in touch with our sense of wonder, awe, connection, transcending time and space. They often take your breath away. Spirituality connects us to something beyond and greater than ourselves as individuals. It is an unnameable, unknowable, invisible force that gives shape and meaning to everything it surrounds. Some of the most visible examples of spiritual experience occur in nature, a glorious sunrise or sunset, glittering stars in the night sky, the majesty of rock formations, the magical silence of snow falling. We also find them in the arts, as when we witness a masterful performance of music, dance, or drama, or with people, the eyes of a newborn baby, the joy of discovering soul friends, that sense of connection we feel as New Year's Eve is celebrated across the time zones on our planet. We can even be touched in the mundane of everyday life when we wake up to what's right in front of us in the present moment. It can occur when you're in the middle of a routine task and suddenly you know there is something special unfolding. Maybe it's a bird appearing outside your window or the taste or smell of freshly baked bread or the feel of warm water as you wash your hands or maybe an unexpected moment of silence. It feeds your inner life, honors something you value, and just makes you glad you are alive. As we remember these moments, it becomes clear that listening occurs in dimensions other than direct communication with others. Spiritual moments are often sourced with our five senses, sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch, as well as our intuitive sense. Spiritual listening 
is embodied listening in which we become a listening presence to all of life. Mary Sherratt invites us to think about it this way. Think about the distinction between looking at a window, describing it in detail perhaps, and looking through a window, which opens up a whole new world to experience. The following practice is designed to expand our awareness about listening and spirituality. For each of eight aspects of listening, there will be a series of questions, which will be on your screen. As I read them, reflect on your responses. Jot down a word or phrase or anything that comes to mind in the moment in response to the questions. I'll pause at the end of each series of questions so you can be with your thoughts or add to your journaling. At the end of the pause, I'll tap a chime, read a quote, which will also be on your screen, and then move on to the next series of questions. You will be able to access a two-page document with all of the questions and quotes on my website, sacredlistening.com. So there's no need to write down the questions. Simply allow yourself to focus on your response to them. I invite you to pause the recording if you'd like more time to reflect on each question. The first series, listen to your body. What is your body telling you? Is it time to rest, eat, move? Does it need to stretch, dance or play? Is it too warm, too cold? Are there aches and pains that need tending to? Think about a time when you were grateful for your body. What was that like? What would it take to feel connected to your body again? Laurel Bladen Maffel, you have permission to rest. You are not responsible for fixing everything that is broken. You do not have to try and make everyone happy. For now, take time for you. It's time to replenish. Listen to your mind. What is your mind telling you? Where are you stretching? Whose voice are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you being called to now? from the wisdom of Mary Oliver. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. 
Listen to your heart. What is your heart telling you? What do you notice when your heart breaks open? What makes your heart sing? Create a space in which you can unfold. There is a vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your business to keep it yours, clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. From Martha Graham. Listen to your emotions. What are your emotions telling you? What are you feeling? Take time to dwell there, be present. Have a sense of curiosity about the emotion. Reflect on that experience. Whenever you find tears in your eyes, especially unexpected tears, it is well to pay closest attention. They're not only telling you about the secret of who you are. God may be speaking to you through them of the mystery of where you have come from and is summoning you to where you should go next. Frederick Buechner. Listen to your soul. What is your inner voice telling you? Check in with that still deep place inside of you where you begin to remember who you are and get in touch with your own deep wisdom. Listen for what wants to be said next. Breathe, practice patience, pay attention to the yearning of your soul.
from an unknown author. What is this precious love and laughter breeding in our hearts? It is the glorious sound of the soul waking up. Listen to the silence. What is the silence telling you? What do you hear when you find yourself in stillness? Surrender to that emptiness. Let go. Journal, meditate. What do you notice beyond the silence? Open yourself up to new possibilities. Stillness is our most intense mode of action. It is in our moments of deep quiet that is born every idea, emotion, and drive, which we eventually honor with the name of action. Leonard Bernstein. Listen to the earth. What is nature telling you? What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What is the land telling you? Notice the vegetation. Keep looking. Remember to look up as well. What are you resonating with? Nature is ever at work, building and pulling down, creating and destroying, keeping everything whirling and flowing, allowing no rest, but in rhythmical motion, changing everything in endless song out of one beautiful form into another. From John Muir. And our last series. Listen to your life. What is your life telling you? What are you present to? We each have deep wisdom in us. What if we held ourselves in reverence? Listen to your life. The mystery of it, the ups and downs, and the grace. Be tender with yourself and with others. Remember that we are human beings, not human doings.
Our final quote is from Mary Sherratt again. I want to truly live my life instead of watching it go by because I'm too busy to enjoy it. These prompts begin with the words, listen to. You might also want to revisit them using the language, listen for, or listen with. Use them as an opportunity to imagine all the different aspects of listening that we have forgotten or neglected. Really listening to one another is one of the greatest gifts we have to give. It requires our full attention. It calls for a mindset of appreciation, curiosity, wonder for the other person. We can't be thinking about what we are going to say in response or how we would handle the situation. It is communicating from the heart. It takes practice to be able to let go of our own agendas, to be present with another. Irish Nobel Prize winner Myron McGuire has written a poem that points to the practice of taking time to learn to listen in this way. Take time to listen to the birds, the winds, the waves. Take time to breathe in the air, the earth, the ocean. Take time to be still, to be silent, to allow God to fill you up with deep peace and love. Relationships transform once we learn how to become a listening presence. We embody listening. The process of change starts with storytelling listening to each other's stories, especially those we tend to other, us versus them, my tribe versus your tribe, etc. As humans, we have needs to be seen, to be heard, to belong. Attentive listening, listening to understand, not to judge, is key to this transformation. Invite the great mystery into your life. Create more space for love and freedom to emerge. Hold space for the patterns that connect. Spirit and soul dimensions are sources which make everything flow in new ways. Slowing down, we find our rhythm, our own natural rhythm. Spiritual listening is embodied listening. We become a listening presence to all of life. I'll close with my favorite quote about listening, paraphrased from David Augsburg. Being listened to is so close to being loved that most people cannot tell the difference. Thank you for your listening and for choosing to share this time together.